Yes, yeah, thank you, Dr. Austin. And uh, thank you all for giving me the opportunity to tell you about uh, uh, the Read IT project. Uh, I've got a problem. Okay. Is it okay to you, you have my presentation on screen? Okay. Uh, so what is Read IT? Read IT uh, is the acronym of Reading Europe Advanced Data Investigation Tool. Uh, it is a four-year project uh, funded by the Joint Programming Initiative for Cultural Heritage, and it's a consortium of uh, five partners from four countries. We are two partners in France, uh, Université du Mans, uh, where I belong, and uh, Elisa Seneas, computer scientist from uh, Rennes in Brittany, the Czech Republic, the Institute of Czech Literature. Uh, we've got uh, colleagues in the UK, Open University, and uh, the DH Lab from the uh, Utrecht Universiteit uh, in the Netherlands. So what are uh, the research questions uh, of, um, and the objective of uh, Read IT? Uh, over the last decades, uh, the knowledge about the history of reading uh, has significantly improved and it has steadily established what, where and when people read in the past and today. Still, two major questions remain unanswered. Why and how do people read? And that's the main uh, research question of, uh, of Read IT. Um, these uh, two main uh, scientific as well as cultural and societal uh, question at large can be decomposed uh, in a series of subordinate micro or macro uh, question among which what kind of transaction, transaction takes place between a reader and a text, what role does the external environment play in this transaction, is it possible to list and model the emotions uh, caused by reading? Have these emotions changed across time and space in Europe? And finally, is it possible to sketch out the portrait of a would-be untypical uh, European reader? In order to uh, answer this question, uh, we uh, we uh, the, the project provide uh, has to provide a set of tools, among which uh, a model, a data model, a model of reading and an, ont an and an ontology. Sorry, an annotation interface, uh, automatic detectors, and a lexicon of reading. So uh, I'm going to the uh, to the to the. the the, the, the model of reading, which which is our first uh, deliverable. Uh, you will have the. Uh, there is a link to uh, to a paper uh, in uh, in the summary of this presentation. So, uh, what is uh, a reading experience? Uh, in order to provide an answer to this question of. Uh, how and why uh, people read, uh, one must consider the act of re creative reading uh, as an individual experience with specific modalities at each iteration of the experience, rather than a universal experience following a common and single pattern. Uh, to make it short, we consider the act of reading as an individual experience involving a person interacting with the content through a medium. And this phenomenon can be uh, preceded by premises and followed by effects and outcomes. I'll come back uh, later on the, uh, the differences between uh, that kind of co uh, those uh, consequences, uh, uh, outcomes and effects. Uh, so, uh, as you can see in this schema, we've got three main uh, categories or classes, upper, upper classes, the reading agent, which is the person, the resource, which is the content and the medium, and the process, uh, basically, basically the, uh, the act of reading, uh, how one reads and its consequences, effects and outcomes. Effects are internal. Uh, which say, I remember uh, having read uh, this book a few years earlier, for example, and outcomes are uh, external consequences. So uh, I read this book and then I uh, passed my exam. Then we had to transpose it into an ontology. So here is a view, maybe I'll, I'm, I uh, am. Uh, trying to switch my screen to another one. Uh, I hope 
this will work. Uh, give me, yeah. So you have a view here of the transposition of uh, this model into, uh, can you see the screen? Yes. I, I hope you won't have seasick. Uh, it's the uh, OWL file uh, just uh, uh, visualized uh, through a, a web OWL. Uh, so uh, there is the uh, there is the, the ontology uh, as it stands now. We are at version two point four, and we've got uh, some uh, extra features that did not exist in the, uh, at the beginning. We decided uh, since the big uh, uh, since the beginning uh, to uh, to to rely on uh, CDOC CRM, and I will explain why. But CDOC, CDOC CRM uh, was not. Uh, fulfilling all our needs uh, at the start. So we had to create some uh, extra classes uh, about uh, the effects and the outcomes, for example. Uh, we've got the, uh, the activity here, which is the act of reading, and then we had, we've got the effects. The here, the circumstances, and the person, the reader. I'm going back to my presentation now. I hope everything is okay. Okay. So, uh, what is Rio? Rio is, uh, it, it consists of uh, 40 classes, uh, which are linked to the main, uh, th two main uh, CDOC uh, CRM uh, uh, classes, so the, the activity, uh, and we added features about circumstances, effects and outcomes, for example, about the person, uh, specific uh, disposition, and about the expression. That's uh, we rely, uh, we, we choose the, to uh, rely on uh, the F2 uh, uh, class uh, expression. So the status and the genre, and it's about the, the, con the, the, the content. Uh, you can visualize uh, the file here uh, by downloading it uh, at, at our GitHub if needed. So why did we choose to work with uh, CDOC CRM? Uh, mainly because CDOC CRM is about cultural heritage and we are dealing with the same matter. Uh, second, uh, CDOC CRM is a standard and uh, it's the best way to ensure interoperability in the future and further maintenance. Uh, also in our project uh, and to our funders, uh, funders we uh, kind of sell, uh, sold uh, a cost-efficient approach. Uh, and we did not to uh, start anything from scratch. We wanted to reuse as a, uh, e existing concept and technology as uh, uh, much as possible. And uh, CDOC CRM has something very interesting for us, and it's uh, the, the question of the, uh, of the experience, which we consider an event uh, that is uh, historically and specially bounded. Uh, the experience, uh, we consider it also an activity involving uh, a human being, that's the yes, uh, that's the uh, act of reading, and if we uh, follow the, the philosophy and uh, the, of the, uh, the CDOC CRM, uh, we uh, consider the effects and outcomes could be uh, our consequences of activity and then our uh, kind of artifacts. And uh, we also uh, we also choose to, to, to rely on CDOC uh, because uh, of it of, uh, the FRBR or object oriented uh, uh, extension that could allow us to link directly with biographic bi bibliographical sorry uh, information. 
So uh, we also think, we also hope that uh, this uh, ontology, that's really an experience ontology in its core, uh, could be potentially reused for the description of uh, other experience, experience, experiential phenomena, sorry. Uh, and uh, the best way to ensure uh, this uh, further uh, reusability is to uh, be part of an ecosystem like CIDA for example. So we designed uh, this ontology with Ontomi. Uh, Francesco will tell it, uh, will tell much more about it uh, in the next weeks. Uh, we liked it, I liked it, because I was the main uh, designer and uh, main user of, uh, of, the, of Ontomi, because it's very, uh, uh, sorry, uh, uh, CEDOC CRM tailored. Uh, it's very user friendly and you don't have to uh, have a specific background in RWL or RDF uh, to use it. Uh, it's very also uh, it's very interesting to have to choose to have the possibility to choose only the necessary necessary features classes of uh, or uh, uh, relations or properties and uh, it's also a chance to be part of a, a community and uh, it's very nice to be uh, welcome the uh, Ilion, uh, the way I was <laughs> and uh, uh, and uh, the, it was really uh, something very, very interesting for us uh, to uh, to be uh, to be to join this community of uh, data forestry and then uh, going back to and going further into CDOC. Uh, I don't know. Yes, I'm finished uh, for the moment.